first thing we need to do is we need to turn this thumb up, or the pocket of the glove needs to come up. The reason for it is my elbow only bends one way. <laughs> and I'll bet your kids, same thing, only bends one way. I can't bend my elbow here and bring my glove down along my side unless I first turn it over. So I need that thumb up, or pocket up. I now draw the glove back right in here along my side, under my armpit, which now permits my throwing arm to come directly overhand and I will throw the ball full position where the hips now and shoulders are linear to the target. Again, with the younger ones and the ones that are struggling a little bit to understand this, I'd get them right here again before they actually throw. All right? So I'd get them into the throwing position. What's different now is when we use the lower half is we're going to take a step or a stride. What's very important about the stride is that it goes straight to the target. Because if I stride here, like a lot of kids will do, it's the same as my shoulder pulling open and they're going to throw sidearm. The triangle, they catch the ball on the tip of the triangle, right? So they're catching the triangle, butt down, <clears throat> hands out. If my butt's up in the air, if my butt's up in the air, yeah, we don't have a triangle, okay? So from a visual perspective, we want the kids to learn how to catch the ball in the triangle. So what we do for this, is we roll the ball back and forth, and we catch the ball in a triangle, nice and smooth. We get, we're good teammates, and we do it over and over and over and over. You can get friggin' 30 in one and a half minutes. Right, so we're gonna create an angle, he's gonna get behind the ball, and it's a visual to, to make sure they don't charge the baseball straight, right? That's all it is. Gonna field the ball, his feet's taking him towards his target. At point of contact, they are always catching the ball in the triangle. That never gets compromised. One more time, Ryan. Make sense? Over and over and over. Okay. So what we're teaching is the fundamentals of just playing catch in a little bit non-traditional playing catch way. Make sense? No? Good receiver. Show me what a good receiver is. If you're a cutoff man, that's a good receiver. If you're receiving the ball at second base, it's a double play, you got to be like that. Guys throwing the ball down from uh, anywhere to second base, third base, you got to catch the ball like that. So we're enforcing good technique on a good receiver. Now the key is my feet take me where I need to go, right? That's why we go around the cones and go to first base. So I'm going to underhand it to the line, feet take me here, good receiver. Give it to me. Fingertips up, you didn't do it. See, that's fingertips down. Fingertips up, fingertips up. That a boy. Simple drill, teaches communication, you're playing catch. Hands are starting right in this, kind of right around the shoulder area. Bat, if you think about a little window here or a square, kind of right in that spot, not wrapped around the back, not out too far here, okay? So when we're swinging, that bat's gonna come, knob of the bat right to the ball, and then the hit barrel's gonna come out with it. Um, getting the knuckles lined up, and you got your knocking knuckles, one way to check on that is get in here, point your fingers out, and you'll see even our high school guys are doing this check frequently. Where are my hands lined up so that when I'm out there, I'm going to be able to get palm up, palm down, and I get the rotation as they come through. Okay? Um, so that's a quick way to check it. If I'm too bound up, now I get tied up in my own swing, and uh, I'm not going to be quite as efficient. Um, as we're talking through here, we're going to start with a stance. We're going to go to the stride, okay? As you notice the stride, he's not moving real far. We don't have the Kirby pocket leg kick here. Um, we want, I, I'm a believer actually in minimal to no stride at all. If you get the, the movement, you get your hands moving a little bit, you're just fine. The stride is just a, a timing mechanism. So you got that. His hands came back slightly two to three inches, we're not getting way back here and the arm's not straightening out. So here, stand stride, okay? It's just getting the hands moving so you're not hitting from a stationary spot. Okay, from there we're gonna go to pivot, okay? And as we pivot, we're not unloading the hips right away, but the back foot, we're gonna say another term, squish the bug, get that thing through so that 
we're getting our momentum coming through, and the hands, and then we're going to go swing. Okay? Knob at the back goes the ball, hands come down. We're not casting that arm out, so we're coming this way, but keeping the hands inside the ball, palm up, palm down when we get to this point, or we can point right to the pitcher, do that finger check again, and you got both fingers going out there at the point of contact. Pivot, okay? So you get your pivot, and all you have left right now is using the hands, okay? You've eliminated all the extra motion. You'll see kids in the batter's box that are like this, and moving all over. Quiet their motion down, quiet the extra movement, and you get here. Right here, we pivot, all we have left now is a swing. So you kind of go from a regression, get up to the final spot, move yourself back, go ahead and swing. Okay? Again, it's using the hands coming through, and you can see, are they getting the hands to the ball? Is the knob of the bat coming through first and then coming down? Or are we kind of pulling off on it? Okay? Um, once you've gone through that, you can get back to just go ahead and hit. Okay? All on their own. Okay? Okay? Nice. Again. Okay. So that's kind of following the whole drill on that. You can also vary the soft toss drills to do some different things. Um, this one here, start out your pivot. Okay? So you get here, drop, toss. And again, this forces them just to use the hands again. So they're coming through, keep the hands inside, and drive the ball. So they're taking that extra motion out of there. Okay? If you do this, I'd say maybe start with this and work back into the full swing so that they're moving on from one spot to the next to the next, a little more progressive. The more they're comfortable, okay? And the more, the more that they catch, they're going to find out what that position is. The biggest thing is, is you don't want a guy who's up too high, okay? They have to be able to get down. Like so if I'm in my hitting position, all right, the catcher should just about be able to touch my elbow. As a general rule of thumb, that's about the distance that they need to be. What we want is roughly a 45 degree bend in that elbow. It's The reason we do that, it serves as a shock absorber, all right? This is a lot easier to catch this way. If I'm out here, I'm a lot stiffer. What I like to teach is calling that a flash target. So now, once you get to pitch level, your pitcher sees where you want to throw the ball. There's a real nice target. After this point, we go into what I like to call and teach as target, point, catch. Target, point, catch. The reason I point my index finger right at the pitcher, all right, notice where the glove is right now, okay? He gave his target, he pointed his finger, he's a quarter turn from anything in the dirt, all right? Anything high, he's a quarter turn to catch anything up in the zone. If we stay in this position, and a lot of catchers are going to have that elbow out, right? If that falls down, they're almost a full turn to get that glove all the way down to catch the ball.